Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay with Kirk Giordano Plastering here. Today I want to uh, show or explain something to a girl in Miwok. Miwok is uh, by Twain Heart. It's just above Twain Heart. She's doing Straw Bale House. I was trying to explain something to her. I'm just messing around here. They're doing a Straw Bale House and her question was, on straw bale, go on by Lou, go on by. Um, on straw bale, when you're doing the ends, she wanted to know how, how we are able to take the mud off of the hawk and put it on vertically, so to speak. With straw bale, you take it off and then you put it vertically. You can't go up. so. Uh, Katie, I'll, sh I'll try to, I told you I'd explain it when we're on a job again. We just happen to be on this job, so I'll show it to you one more time. Okay. And two, it matters the size of your hawk and trowel. Use a trowel and a hawk that you're comfortable with. For example, here's your typical hawk. This is the one I use, but that's beside the point. Use smaller tools like this uh, square trowel. But when you're using the big ones, it uh, has a tendency to defy gravity. So here's what you do, Katie. All right. Say, for example, this is Dan already got started here. And I said, boy, I was going to show Katie how to do that vertical plastering. Stop it. So here's what the average person does, guys. We take it and we put it on like so. All right. If you want vertical for a straw bale, and by the way, I was telling Katie, we, we've done a straw bale house and I showed how to do the corner, but I'll show it again. You're going to take some mud off. Now the centrifugal force. Now watch. Sideways and upward. Watch. Sideways and upward. Upward. And sideways. So what happens if I put mud on here and without sway in it. It comes right off. Okay. We all know that. So when you're doing straw bale corners, what you're going to want to do is, this is just one motion guys. It's just like that. Just like that. And then when you turn it vertically, like magic, it should stay on. See that? Like this. Turn it. Turn it. Magic. It should stay. And regardless of what direction you're going in, if you want to do that vertical, watch. You just turn it. See that? So, if you keep in mind once more, uh, Katie, um, on that straw bales, when you want to do that vertical plastering, take it, your, uh, and practice a couple times too. Take it and drop it off. You can see Okay, if the, if the mud is wet too, I know I'm rambling on now, but if the mud is wet, it's going to fall off. If it's too sandy, it's going to fall off. But when you've got decent mud, and this is decent mud, you're going to put it on and watch the motion. Let's see how slow I can go. Yeah. Okay, and the idea is you're just going. And like... Like anything in, in, the, in the world. I'm doing this stuff here and making it look a little easier, but that's years of experience. No matter what you want to do in life, it's going to take practice. So, Katie, I hope this gives you an idea. What you want to do is, I'm going to get on this opposite side just to show you. You want to practice. When you got your mud on the board, do it like so. Okay, put it on. Check the mud. Check it. See, that's kind of sticky. That's good mud. If That's pretty good mud, even though it's falling off right there. So again, you just put it on. Put as much as you want on. Upward. Always upward. Upward. Anyway, Katie, I hope that explains it a little bit more than my comments to you of how to do this. Anyway, guys, my name is Kirk, Jay on the camera. 
Dan, Carl, Lou, everybody's over here. We're having fun today. We thank you for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks, we want to thank you for watching how we do things in the stucco and plastering world. We really enjoy your questions and comments, so if there's anything you want to learn about that we can show you, please let us know in the comments. And as always, from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. one.